And I didn't realize how drunk I was mm -hmm. until I am handed the mic to sing one of Frankie Moreno's songs that I knew by heart. And I start singing until the second that stanza. Moment. Yeah, and I start singing the second stanza, and I'm like, and Frankie's looking at me, and he's like, Joshua Corey, ladies and gentlemen, and takes yeah. the mic back and finishes the song. Yeah. And I'm looking at Tony like, you mother <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including this guy and me. I'm Josh, and today my guest is the front man for a local Las Vegas rock band playing American Groove rock music, in their own words. Self-described as a hard worker, a father, friend, singer, metalhead, gamer, stand-up comedian, and an MMA fan, please welcome to the show Deacon Sin from Not Your Kind. Say hi. How's it going, everybody? Not Your Kind, right here. Uh, right off the bat, I just want to say, if you're a patron on my Patreon page, thank you very much. So is this guy. And if you're not, be one. Haha, <laughs> thank you. And also, welcome to the show. Thank you. Let's do it for oh. There we go. Empty toast with water, yay. Oh. But because he's a patron, instead of mailing him a CD, I thought I'd take this opportunity to give him his CD in person. Off camera, we talked about the two choices. I've got a CD, my first CD is called Mr. Nice Guy, and my second CD is Postcards from the Sun. This was recorded engineered everything by BJ Therio at Redstone Studios over in Summerlin, here in Vegas, and he did a great job. And it's got three songs from my indie rock band called The Suspense. It's got five songs, one, two, three, four, sorry. <laughs> I can't count. It's got three songs of my own that are just me uh, with some special guests. So here, to you, I present Postcards from the Sun. Thank you very much. I'm excited to go listen to it. Awesome. Um, aside from that, there's some other perks as well which I'm going to put the perks for the uh, Patreon pages here. Again, and, sign up immediately. Nice. And, well, watch this first. <laughs> and then sign up immediately. Yes. But I just want to say, first, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Second of all, <clears throat> uh, thanks for being a patron. And third, I wanted to say, what are you currently up to as a band that's coming up soon? Uh, well, right now we have we got two songs on Spotify that have been on Spotify and all the other platforms for a couple of years, and we're in the process of recording some new stuff. So that's what we're working on now is getting new music out um, as soon as possible. Right on. Uh, I'll be reviewing some of that new music as well. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell; you'll be notified. And I look forward to uh, checking it out. Absolutely. Now, before we get into kind of you know the normal Q and A, so mm -hmm. to speak. I wanted to say, can we talk a little bit about Project Redline? Yes. So when I first got in, when I first got into the band that I'm in now, Not Your Kind, mm -hmm. shameless plug. Um, Nothing shameless about it. Go for it. <laughs> the first name we had was Project Redline. Um, we had another guitar player in the band at the time, an additional one, aside from one that's still in the band. When he left, they decided that they didn't want to keep the same name. Wasn't my decision. That was the rest of the guys. Gotcha. So, not your kind was the new name that came up, that we came up with. And less than a month after we changed our name, Slipknot's album "Not Your Kind" dropped. Nice. After we'd already made new Facebook, new logos, and everything. So suddenly you're a Slipknot uh, tribute band. Which is I've heard of, like, oh, you're a Slipknot tribute band? No. I really like Slipknot, but I cannot do Corey vocals. <laughs> not many people can. No. I can do like the first half of of uh, of uh, oh he did, what he did with Dave Grohl um, crap it's there it's there it's there I practice drumming to it um, look at all these people tragic little people oh I don't know that one from from can to can't oh okay from can to can't I can sing the first half oh, there you go <laughs> but that second half. He goes for it, so yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, my right right now, my my favorite new thing I'm listening to is uh, another YouTuber, Jared Dines. He's a guitar YouTuber. Okay, he's doing a project with Howard that used to be in Kill Switch Engage. Oh wow! Uh, called Sion, S I O N, super heavy, really cool. I'll have to check it out. That's one of the next things about doing these interviews and and uh, reviews is that I I hear all these band names and musician names that I've never heard of before, and then I'm like, oh well. As I'm editing, I'm like, make a note, go check it out. It's really cool. Um, it's, and it's so much, 
it's easy. Like I have a frame of reference. If mm-hmm. this person who does this music says, you know, check it out or, yeah. or likes them, uh, it's better than just kind of bin diving in at Zia Records or something. Yeah. Hoping another another band you should definitely should check out. Reason why I'm wearing this hat. This is my friend's band from California, Sunflower Dead. They're currently on tour with Smile Empty Soul. This is the best band and ours that <laughs> you haven't heard of. So subscribe and Spotify us both. Nice. Hell, I'll just take a break. You want to, you know, go ahead. <laughs> right? All right? 30 minutes of self-promotion. There you go. Um, you're the former vocalist for Cabal. Yeah, Cabal was my very first band mm-hmm. when I lived in Mexico. I lived in Mexico for 17 years. Um, um, you're not born there, though. No, no, I was born in California. Okay. Uh, German background. Lived in Mexico for 17 years. That's kind of a long story, but basically my mom left my dad because he was a, a drunk, abusive... Yeah. You know, you can swear whatever. by the way on this. <laughs> so we ended up moving down to Mexico when I was 13 years old, and uh, I always liked music, and I had friends that were musicians, and I was going to see bands all the time. And this one friend of mine, amazing guitar player, Armenian guy, his name's Kisog. Hmm. This is this is the kind of guy that he's so good. You could play him like a like an Ingvi Malmsteen song that he hadn't heard, and halfway through it, he could play it. Wow. Like like stupid good, stupid right good. So. He was talking about uh, uh, setting up a new project. I was like, hey, I want to audition to be the singer. And obviously that's not going to work because he's a professional and I'd never been in a band. So, but he's my buddy. So he's not trying to like right. just shit on me. So he goes, hey, you know, you're not going to work for this project. But this kid that is my guitar student wants to do his first band. You and him would be perfect. That's how Cabal started in Mexico back in like 91. Simone, nice. Uh, speaking of Mexico, you were on the Tijuana Rock podcast recently? Yes, uh, uh, me and the guy from that podcast hooked up over Facebook, uh, and he contacted me through Messenger and asked me, hey, are you, are you the singer for Cabal? Because um, his podcast covers the Tijuana rock scene from the 80s to the mid-2000s. Nice. Which is, there was a, there was a, a couple of periods in there, including when Cabal was running, which was early 90s, mm-hmm. which was a fantastic scene. Lots of bands, lots of shows. So he asked me, and I'm like, yeah, that's me, and he's like, oh man... The listeners of my podcast ask me about your old band all the time. Wow. Would you do an interview? <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> so we did one. It uh, went very, very well, and uh, we got a lot of uh, positive reaction from it. Uh, you did. And it's on Spotify and I believe his YouTube channel. Now, you did that in English or in Spanish? In Spanish. Okay, because you are both, you're bilingual. Yes. yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, now, to the you know meat of the interview. Yes. Let's talk about it. Musical influences. I want to talk about your earliest musical influence, whether it was in Germany or Mexico, where you were like, I want to do that, or I want to learn that instrument, or, you know, what was it that made you start thinking about learning music? Very easy. Two voices that made me want to sing. Okay. Ronnie James Dio, Bruce Dickinson. Of course. Yeah. Can't sing like either one of those guys. (laughs) Who can? But those were the albums that I started singing to. All the time when I was younger, I can see it. Yeah. Um, later, later it became uh, Lane Staley, who was mm-hmm. one of my favorite singers. But my favorite singer ever, and I think the most versatile singer in rock, right? Mike Patton from Faith No yes. More, Mr. Bungle. Oh, I always forget Tomahawk. Yeah, he does so much behind the scenes yeah. that people never hear about, or, or like you know people that only know Faith No More, you know the music videos and the mm-hmm. exploding piano. The, the, it, when you hear about it, you're like, oh, wow, you just decided, you know, I don't need to be in front of the camera so much. He did, like, he did an Italian opera yeah. with a f- full philharmonic. Yeah. The guy's amazing. He can, he can go from the most crooniest, amazing, soft, like silky crooner voice mm-hmm. to sounding like chipmunks being thrown in a blender in two seconds. <laughs> yeah, I did that. I just my toe. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah, um, it, it's... When um, singer for Stone Temple Pilots that died, Scott Weiland. Thank you. When Scott Weiland uh, came out right before he passed away with that Christmas mm-hmm. thing, he's trying to be Mariah it was, Carey. It was kind of like that, but you know, Matt Patton takes it a yeah. whole other level. But I, it, you probably had the same reaction. I was like, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. So um, good on you, Matt. If you're you're not gonna watch this anyway. Uh, so that's your music, early music, earliest musical influence. Mm-hmm. What are you currently listening to that gets you jazz, gets you you know wanting to rock or um, wanting to write? Well, my 
My writing is, I don't know if it's different from other people because I haven't really talked to too many other people about, you know, writing. What, one thing that I found really interesting in other bands that I like, like for example, Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. Iron Maiden is one of my favorite bands ever. The bass player writes pretty much all the lyrics. I didn't know that. Uh, Black Sabbath, from what I understand, Geezer Butler wrote most of the lyrics. That I knew, yes. I write all the lyrics. I got a big book full of lyrics that I've written over the years. And when we're working on a new song, you know, the, the other three guys will be jamming out and they'll, they'll be a, a hook or a riff that I like. And I'll tell them, okay, that riff you're doing, just do that over and over again. And they'll just keep going. Keep, and, I'll, gotcha. and, I'll, and I'll look through my book and I'll be like, no, 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 no. And I'll find one that fits and I'll just start singing it. And that's how we I, put words to music. Yep. But as far as when I write, it could be as simple as, I'll be watching a TV show and I'll hear a phrase or a word. Yes. I'll jot it down, then I'll come back to it. And I've actually written songs based on one word or one sentence that just popped in my head. Yeah. I've done the same thing where like, I like to call it a 10 minute song mm -hmm. that took months because I would walk around with this thing in my head, just living rent free. And then I would sit down or, or you know, so I would, there'd be music involved and I would like, hey, so open that file. Yeah. Yes, that'll work. And then I build from there and it usually takes like 10 minutes to finish the song. Um, I, I've also done the thing where the, I'm like, just keep playing. I'm going to sit here in the corner and, and mm -hmm. listen and, and just write lyrics. I've done that and I've also brought lyrics and said, let's make a song of this. So, yeah, yeah it's, I, it's, I, it's... I have a couple of lyrics now that I have the vocal melody in my head mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get my guys to reverse engineer them. <laughs> so I'll get with the guitar player and mm -hmm. I'll sing them in the cadence that I hear and then he'll write the music to go around the way I'm singing it. Now, do you play any instruments at all? I'm a really shitty guitar player. Well, can you at least pick out the notes and say, here's what I'm hearing in my head? Bing, well, bing, bing. So, so the way it works for me is I'll pick up the guitar mm -hmm. and I'll go and I'll like one string it. Nice. And then he'll go, oh, you mean this? And he'll just play all the chords that I'm thinking in my head. That's all you need? Yeah. 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 We, we, we connect really well musically. Nice. Um, from there, from, from influences, mm -hmm. wanted to move on to, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump around okay. than my normal... You know, I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit. Now, if you're gonna jump around, you have to jump up, jump up, and get down. <laughs> yes, so very much so. Music puns. Well done. Yes, he's got them. Um, I want to talk about gear since we're talking about guitar. Now, do you, I assume at a show, are you bringing your own microphone or are you? Oh yeah, I have a, a really nice uh, Sennheiser wireless cool. that I've been using for a couple of years. I had a Shure before, mm -hmm. uh, Beta Fifty Eight wireless. Um, I tried the Sennheiser on the recommendation of a friend of mine uh, from Los Angeles, and I did them side by side. I'm like, I, it's it's brighter, yep. and I feel like my power comes through better. So I sold the Shure, bought the Sennheiser, and I'm the only, well, I've seen a couple of guys on tour, but I'm the only guy that I've seen locally that does my own effects. Huh. So I have an effects pedal. It's a, it's a TC Helicon effects pedal. Mm -hmm. I have a different patch for every song. Nice. And then it's got a hit button. So like there's certain songs where I have parts where I want echo and most of the song doesn't have it. So I turn the echo on and off when it comes in. See, I've dreamed about that for yeah. years. I, I thought about doing something like that and I said, well, you know, I'll just write around it. Yeah. And, and I, I, yeah. No, you got to get one. It's called a voice live play. It's like 250 bucks. Wow. It's a game changer. So any of you guys that may have seen this live, when you see me doing this... <laughs> I'm changing the presets. I'm not just my... keeping the beat. <laughs> yeah, I'm changing the presets on my vocal processor. Nice. Especially because it's in very specific parts. of Like there's this one song where it's in one word of, of each line of the chorus. Nice. So I got to be like... It's really it's funny. Nice. Tap dancing. Tap dancing. Uh, speaking of tap dancing, yes, daughter. We're back. What's up? My teenage daughter wanted to be healthy and have blueberries, so what the hell? Go for it. Uh, now, we were talking about gear. Mm -hmm. You're rocking a Sennheiser. Um, you show up, do you bring the sound gear too, or you just whatever the place uh, I bring. I bring uh, my wireless, I bring my uh, vocal processor, and I got my own stand just because. Oh, your mic stand? Yeah, yeah, because I noticed most places the stands are kind of rickety. So I bought a really nice like Hercules stand. Hercules. That thing's super stable. Well, the thing I like about it too is not only is it adjustable, but it adjusts this way. 
Okay. So there's certain parts, like like in the softer songs, if I don't want to hold, if I want to engage a little more with the audience, I'll put the mic up and tilt it and get more like that Lemmy mm -hmm. vocal expression so I can sing while I'm kind of looking at the audience. Right on. And then on the other parts, if I'm just going to be going full blast, my held out, kind of drop it and push it over to the side. Right. So it, may, it, it, it creates a lot of versatility for me on stage because I try not to be the guy that's just like... Bum, 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 the whole time. Like, I wanted, right. you know, get a little bit oh, going on. I can't stand a band that's phoning it in or, or yeah. that is afraid to have fun on stage. It's like, if you're having fun, the crowd will have fun. And, and exactly. And that was my, my favorite thing as a singer was the moment I was able to put a guitar down and just sing. Because I was also yeah. the front man. And I was also so that's guitar. a good thing for me. Never pick up a guitar on stage. Well, yeah, I mean, now... I if, suck. <laughs> well, for me, I've always been a singer. Like, yeah. I studied voice. I've always been a singer who also happens to play some instruments. I'll yeah. never call myself a guitarist, I'll never call myself a drummer or a bass player, but I can play them. And given enough time, I can learn a particular song if you tell me to, mm. but I'm, I'm not, you're not gonna see me down at the jazz jam, you know? Right. <laughs> you know, just be like, yeah, I feel confident, let's go. What's that, take five? Okay, cool. <laughs> that's a, that's what, that's a jazz joke. Anyway, um, so uh, you're the second actual person this week that mm -hmm. I've interviewed who is a Sennheiser fan. Um, James uh, Barry from Circusic, also okay. rocks Sennheiser. Oh, I love Circusic. The yeah. bass player is really amazing. He's the, yeah, he's a founding member. James, uh, I hate that. Yeah, he's a founding member, and he uh, but he. Uh, my, my I'm sorry. My I, my favorite thing about seeing them live mm -hmm. is the bass player wherever they play runs across the monitors and never falls down. You didn't tell me that, James. Yeah. Uh, and I just jinxed him. So now, James, yeah. at the next show when he falls, it's because of me. They're actually playing tonight. I'm going to the show. Oh, shit. I should so go So I'm going to tell him, hey. Is that Triple B's? Yeah. I might go to that tonight. Uh, Sounds like fun. Why not? Well, by the time this posts, that show is way over. But yeah, um, I'll be so there. So that's why you should be paying attention to local shows. And subscribe. Uh, I miss Join his Patreon. But I have to watch. our Spotify and our YouTube and our Facebook and our Instagram and my OnlyFans that I haven't opened yet. Okay. It won't be one of those, though. I have to wind it back, though, because I misspoke. James Berry, the bass player and founding member of Circus Sick, mm -hmm. doesn't sing. James Nixon, mm -hmm. he yes. rocks the Sennheiser. Because I, I had a James and a James. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Mental fart. What an idiot. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, what a loser. Good. Good. So, anyway, moving on. Yes. So we talked about gear. Have you ever lost any gear? Now, as a singer, if you're just singing, it's pretty hard to lose your mic. I've been lucky that I haven't. I was with a band, and we had a show, and when the show was over, we found out that one of the other bands accidentally yeah. took my drummer's amazing brand new double bass pedal. You don't that that you got to work hard to get that. Well, see, this is the thing. Luckily for me, mm -hmm. or luckily for him. I knew who the band was, and because they were a local band, they weren't like passing through town. Mm -hmm. So I contacted them, and I went the next day, and I'm like, "I know you accidentally yeah. took that pedal, and I went and got his pedal back." Yeah, I mean, unless how do you act anyway? Eh, it's, it's, anyway. It was okay. So from evidently, these guys who shall remain unnamed had been known to accidentally take other people's stuff before. Wow, yeah. dick. Um, right on. So from, from the lows of losing gear to the highs of dream gear, do you have any dream gear you're lusting after? And... Uh, I really want TC Helicon to make a new version of the pedal I already have. They haven't made a new one in five years. So what, what you got but more? Yeah. So they have another version of the one that I have that's a, about a year or two newer than mine. Mm -hmm. It's called the Voice Live Extreme, but that one just does a bunch of stuff that I don't need. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like if I'm a decent guitar player, I can get away with a low-level Schecter. Okay. But if you gave me a super high-level PRS, it's not going to help me. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's kind of the comparison I'm making. Like, the other one would probably do a couple cool more things, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't need all the extra things it has to make sense to spend the extra money on it. Right. Like, I, I will... I'm going to enjoy a lot better, mm. uh, a, say, a, a newer camera mm. or something for YouTube than I will a very expensive guitar or even a very expensive yeah. microphone at, at my stage because I'm not currently performing, I'm not with a group, and anything you hear recording-wise for me is is like open room six gotcha. into my computer. So it's like I don't 
need that. And, and, and I'm not a guitarist, like I've said, so I, I, I don't enjoy the nuances of this $1,500 guitar. Gotcha. <laughs> like a, you know, and now that being said, I've held some very expensive guitars and they've even, got, even been asked, or not been asked, but been said, go ahead, play if you want. Mm -hmm. And I've played them and it's noticeable. Mm -hmm. But every guitar I have is under 200 bucks. Yeah. For a reason. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the last guitar I bought, because I wanted to get a, I just wanted to get a seven string or something because we're going to, we're kind of moving into, Set, we want to write some seven string songs because my guitar player's got a couple seven strings. Okay. Um, so I bought one just so I can start messing around with ideas. I bought a Harley, is it Harley Benton or Haley Benton? I think it's a, Haley? Yeah, I, it's a, it's I, a I company out of Germany, I'll but they're manufactured there. in Indonesia. Took me six months to get this thing. That's right. I remember this the thing, story. Great guitar. I fucking love it. it. I mean, it plays great. It looks great. It came perfect out of the box, but... My God, it takes forever to get their shit to you. Yeah, no, no. I remember uh, somebody else was on the show. I, but that is a recommendation. Who, yes. If you want an inexpensive good guitar, they're really good. Somebody was telling me about it. They said the story about like Germany, and, and, and I was just like, really? That's weird. Yeah. And they said it took forever. Same thing. But apparently it's really worth it. I'm, I I will put up on the screen like the proper name of it if you want to check it out. Yeah. Um, all right, so move yeah, on. And, and the one I got, so you can put the exact one, mm -hmm. it's the seven-string fan fret. Which guitar okay. players, I know for some reason the frets are tilted. I don't know why that's cool. Guitar players, I think it's don't hate me because of it. I think it's it makes easier to do like certain runs on the yeah. It, it has something to do with with the scale. It right. being a seven string or something. Yeah. But all right, well, moving on from gear. Yes. Let's talk memories. Uh, your favorite show memory performing with not your kind or with the ball. What is that memory that sticks out of just? Huh, that was amazing, or that was crazy, or he went to jail, or, or I can't. I woke up in a bush, whatever. So I heard them all. <laughs> two, two specific, two specific ones. One with not your kind. Mm -hmm. One with my first band, not your kind first. A couple years ago, before the zombie apocalypse happened, uh, we played at the Beauty Bar when they were still doing ah, the shows in the back. Yeah. It was a so it was a tour that was coming through town. We got thrown on to open. The tour was Pigweed, which is a really heavy band from Texas. Mm -hmm. Definitely look them up. Really cool. Okay. Uh, a band called Tala, T-A-L-L-A-H, which you don't really need to look them up because they're getting pretty well known. The bass player, I think, is Mike Portnoy's son. Oh, wow. But they're like a scream core band. Okay. Um, obviously, we opened the show. But the main band, which was really cool, was, you know, uh, uh, Waylon Rivas from Mushroom Head? Rings a bell. Uh, his... his New-ish, they've been, it's been a few years, but his newest band called The Killer's Confession, fantastic band. That's a, that's a, that, that could be an emo band name. <laughs> yeah, we were, it was, it was towards the end of the tour, I think there was two more, uh, uh, two more stops on the tour after that. Mm -hmm. We brought, we made sure we brought all of our people, obviously a lot of people came to see the main bands, but we got a really good reaction. And Waylon, after the show, paid us a really good compliment. He said that we were the best, uh, opening band they had on that tour which was cool nice uh, and then from my first band when i lived in tijuana i was very privileged to be good friends with a very popular band on there called tijuana no which are still going now i just went to a couple other shows on their last tour they came to vegas they went to la um they went to new york city which i didn't get to go to but they were really really big at the time they were you know pulling huge crowds and we got to open for them twice in front of huge crowds which really gave us a lot of traction in uh Cabal. It was a big part of why we did so well. Nice. Nice. Um, so, from those memories, we'll talk about your favorite venue. What's your favorite Vegas uh, live music venue? And it doesn't have to be one you've played necessarily, but just when you think live music venue, what is it that pops in your head for you know the, the, the ideal? For the longest time, my favorite venue to play at and to go see a show at was Vamped. But? But we just did that. Stephen Duran, rest in peace, we love you. We just did uh, his uh, memorial show at the Fremont Country Club. Mm -hmm. That is my new favorite place to play. It's I love that stage. It is one of the very few venues I have yet to be inside. Yeah. Because every time I think, oh, so-and-so's playing, cool, this is my opportunity. For some reason, something happens where I can't go. I gotcha. And uh, it pisses me off. Like Being at Triple B, like I'll be tonight, right next door, I'm just like, all I want to do is peek inside. Yeah. <laughs> I like Triple B. I've never played that stage yet. It's... It's a good stage. It, it's bigger than it looks yeah. from the crowd, from, from the, the, the yeah. floor. Um, like any venue, there's pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Okay, But um, yeah, if you're there tonight, I can 
show you some of the things I'm talking about. Okay. But uh, Vamp, yeah, I mean, especially Rock, like they, they've got it dialed in, they know the scene, and I really like the fact that here's music, here's bar. Yeah. And they're separated, and you can actually like it, be in the bar and order. You're still yelling a little bit, depending yeah. on the night. Yeah, but it's not that bad. The, the way they got it set up is really smart. Right. Uh, funny thing about uh, uh, Vamped, as far as I know, I don't know if I'm the only person ever, but I'm one of the very few people to have done stand-up on that stage. And it was at, Sorry, a, rock, it was at a rock show. I forgot about the stand-up comedian thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, that's, ooh, that's, yeah. that's got to be scary a little bit. So years ago, mm -hmm. I, you know, you know uh, uh, Carolyn, tall, skinny singer, amazing singer. From... She did uh, Rating the Rock Vault for a little while. Yes, yes. I think... Oh, her, her story. Oh, uh, her story. And then I think she's doing a Journey tribute. Thing? I can believe it. Yeah. Because she's amazing. But anyway, she had a running show that was like roughly every month. It would depend on how the month would fall. Right. But it was called Carolyn and Some Guys. <laughs> so it was her. I believe the drummer was a regular drummer. And pretty much the bass players, they'd get a couple different bass players. But the idea was that the guitar players would be like, every two songs, the guitar players would switch. Oh, wow. So you'd go there and you'd see, you know, uh, Andy Ingram and Dustin Allen and Jason Constantine and G Silver and Chris Garcia. You'd see all the best guitar players in town right. on stage with them. Andy and Ingram? From... I think Andy played with her at least once. From Nocturnal Affair. Nocturnal and, and Bravo Delta, Delta and yeah. First Class Trash he's, and he's Revolver. Been, he's been here. And yeah, I love Andy. I didn't realize that Andy's he's... one of my best friends. If you see this, Andy, you know I love you, bro. Andy, you definitely... I, yeah. I'm not, I believe it because he's certainly qualified. Yeah. I just don't... I'm trying to picture him like so, doing that kind Speaking of thing. Speaking of Nocturnal Affair, did you see the big announcement they just made? Which They're one? going on tour with Fozzie. Yes. And... That's good, fucking good, good on you guys. Good on yes. you guys. I, I'm proud. Just, uh, what a coincidence that they're going on, to, on, on tour with Fozzie when they just did Chris Jericho's cruise. <laughs> he must have liked them. Right? I am, I, I am proud to say that Nocturnal Affair are, are friends of Room 6. Yeah. And have been, Good guys. Uh, yep. Yeah, and and, and uh, I just actually got messaged by uh, Brendan the Singer a couple days ago. Name drop. Uh, yeah. to, to, to basically like, you know, we got to talk soon. We, let's, I want to get them back in and um, get them uh, hopefully maybe even performing kind of because I know they can also do like a stripped down yeah. kind of acoustic thing, and I want to get, the, I want to see how that sounds up there. But uh, in the meantime, moving on, we talked about influences, we talked about gear, we talked about um, memories, and now I want to talk to you about advice. Normally, I say, you know, what 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 is your advice to like a new musician that comes up to you and says, "How do I be like you?" But first of all, don't be like me. Yeah, yeah. But but what I I. I the answers are we've kind of run the gamut, you know, change yeah. of strings, practice, practice, practice. So instead, what I want to say is, what is? Let's pretend we're talking to Little Deaconson <laughs> when he's first thinking about getting into music, and he's listening to Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and all that. Um, what is a piece of advice that you had to learn the hard way that you wish you had somebody had told you? Uh, that one, that, that one for me is real easy. The 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 piece of I would get, especially singers. But in but any instrument that you play and your voice is an, is an instrument, you know, don't don't let people tell you, oh yeah, the singer, you're the you're the cool guy that hangs out with real musicians. No, your voice is an instrument. Yes. Don't underestimate yourself. That was a big thing with me. Like the first couple bands I tried again, I would go and audition, and I already wasn't going to get the gig before I got there because I thought I wasn't good enough. Right. So I'd go in there and. I know now, looking back with reflection, that I didn't give it my all because I was being my own, I was being my, my own worst enemy. Because I'm walking in to this arena thinking I don't belong here. Never think that. Like, and I'm not saying be an egotistic diva, but anytime you pick up a mic, whether it's an audition, whether it's a show, for whatever. Own that moment like you deserve to be there because you do. Because you are an artist and your artist, your your art needs to be shared with people. Exactly. Especially uh, if you're putting in the effort and your issue is more of either uh, imposter syndrome or just confidence issues, whatever. If you've, if you've actually been putting in the effort, if you know this stuff, fake it till you make it. I, I've done it and it... it We've all, every musician is, is just riddled with doubt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I'm here to tell you, every musician, name it, no matter how big, they've all had that moment. And 
continue to have that moment right before they hit the stage where they're like, all right, what's the first chord? What's the first layer? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. Every single show it happened. I was, never, I was never okay at a performance until I got the first word out because then it, it just, yeah. you know, the repetition, it just kicks in. And, and whatever that first line is, that's the first word. If you forget that first word, you're yeah. boned. <laughs> but, but, and uh, fall, falling back on, on, on writing and stuff like that. And I've had this happen at a show is we're, we're three quarters of the way through the set. There's a song coming up. And same thing. I can't think of the first line. Now, I know the melody. Yeah, yeah. So I know, I know how the words are supposed to sound. So what I, what I did is, uh, and this, this was at Vamped, and uh, I just start belting out to the melody, but just whatever came off the top of my head. And did the band look at you like sideways? <laughs> I don't think they could hear it enough to notice the difference because the cadence was the same. Oh gosh. To be honest, but the but the point of the story is, so my son was filming it. So we finish up, and I go back and watch it, and like the first two lines, I just made up, and then I kind of fell back into the groove. I rewrote the first two lines because those were better than the original lines. Because obviously. It was natural, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it just it came out of the heart and the mind. I've done the same thing, not not performing wise, but mm -hmm. like uh, I'll be recording, and and for whatever reason you forget what you wrote, you don't yeah. look down at the paper in front of you. Um, have you ever started singing the second stanza at the beginning of a song? Oh, for sure. I've done that. I've done that at many shows. I second verse first. Time for a little. Time for a little. Uh, Inside baseball. Time to, time to take Josh down a peg. There's a local act named Frankie Moreno. Mm -hmm. if, uh, I know Frankie Moreno. Yeah. Never seen him, but I know who he is. Currently, uh, recently set the number one, or set the record for most number ones by you know an artist in his category. Yeah. 61. Nice. Like just literally, there was a month where he cranked out a song every day with his band. <whistles> like a new song. Every, yeah. I mean, it, and the, you go watch Frankie Moreno show. It's always, he's headlining, casino showroom. Yeah. And you get in there and you're like, oh, this is what a showman looks like. Yeah. This is, like, he's the new, you know, uh, uh, I'm not going to say Elvis, but he's the new, like, Wayne Newton. Yeah, yeah, he's like the new Wayne Newton. Yeah, but, uh, uh, his, but his, him and his band, nicest guys, uh, his brother Tony plays bass, mm -hmm. and they, they do a lot of the songwriting together. They've traveled the world, they've performed all over the place, and uh, he was, for whatever reason, they got hired to open a bistro in uh -huh. town that's no longer in business uh -huh. but it was like i guess a friend a friend of the family friend or whatever and they got they paid to do it and i was like yeah i'll come down i want to check it out and i'm sitting there and his brother tony <sighs> tony you're not going to see this but just kept feeding me drinks yeah <laughs> and it's not the first time this had happened when they they they, they started playing uh the the lounge uh the uh at the uh, gold rush or okay. i'm sorry the nugget yeah the casino start playing the Gold Rush Lounge and all the time. And uh, I'd go in there and occasionally they were nice enough to let me get up and, and sing, you know, a cover song. we do like Pride and Joy or something. Something fun. And I'm at this thing and I didn't realize how drunk I was mm -hmm. until I'm handed the mic to sing one of Frankie Moreno's songs that I knew by heart. And I start singing until the second that moment. stanza. Yeah, and I start singing the second stanza and I'm like... And Frankie's looking at me and he's like... Josh McCoy, ladies and gentlemen, and takes yeah. the mic back and finishes the song. Yeah. And I'm looking at Tony like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so, but even then, as soon as I realized my error, I just kept, I just went with it. I just yeah. kept going, and I handed the mic back at the appropriate break, and I said, I'm so yep. sorry. That's, a, that's, a, that's another thing. Uh, uh, newer bands that are getting started. If you're at a show, you're playing live, and there is a mistake... The last thing you do is stop and recognize that mistake. Figure out a way to yeah. power through it. Yes. That's one of my favorite things. If I know a band like really well, yeah. is hearing a mistake and, yeah. and, and I'll, I'll, I'll just... And watching them adjust. And I'll just watch them and be like, I, got, I caught it. I caught Cause, it. Because because this is the thing, especially when you're a newer band. No one knows your songs that much except you. Yeah. So if there's a small mistake that you guys can push through and fix it quickly, nobody's going to notice except you guys. You'll be fine. Right on. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And if you are, by any stretch of the imagination, a booker, a promoter, a venue, not your kind, they're looking for gigs, hit them up. Absolutely. I, I'll have the links down in the description. Um, in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it would make a big difference, and I'd really appreciate it. Please click down there. Definitely subscribe. Don't forget to be amazing, and we'll see you next time.
on room six. Say bye. Later. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Meow.